Okay, hello everybody. I'm Juan Manuel Carrillo, and I'm currently working as GIS leader of a very talented group of GIS fascial professionals in Bogota, Colombia. WSP Parsons Brinkerhoff is one of the world's leading engineering professional services consulting firms. Our expertise is focused on five main market sectors, infrastructure, buildings, transportation networks, energy, and environment. WSPPB has approximately 34,000 employees in more than 500 offices across 40 countries worldwide. Let's start by looking at how diverse Colombia is. In terms of natural environment, Colombia has 56 protected areas, also known as natural parks, which is nearly 12% of our entire territory. There you will find very steep mountains, deep valleys, deserts, jungles, and so on. Have you ever asked yourself about how many bird species does your country have? Well, Colombia has the largest bird list of any country in the world, with at least 1,800 recorded species. We also have a variety of cultural groups, ranging from native people in the Amazonas region to Afro-Colombians in the Caribbean and Pacific coasts. In addition, as you might have heard, we have some internal security issues mainly related to some rebel groups. Managing all these cultural variables, as well as the natural environment complexity, is a very challenging geographic aspect of our ongoing projects. In our projects, we see GIS as a powerful set of tools which give us significant advantages to capture, storage, manage, analyze, visualize, and ultimately share geographic information. Specifically in Colombia, we have been using mainly ArcGIS desktop to address many of the GIS requirements of most projects. Let's see some examples. On the left photograph, you see a high voltage transmission line. This project, we used ArcGIS to perform environmental assessment, planning, and seeding. At the top right example, we have a water project. Here we run a spatial analysis model that gave us an insight about how to optimize our storage and distribution system. And finally, at bottom right, you see our road redesign project. In this one, ArcGIS has become so handy to supervise all the necessary modifications of our existing electric and wire networks along the road. Since this is the driving change through analytics track, let's have a look at some significant facts which have been modifying the way we see Colombia as our marketplace. Three days ago, the government of Colombia and FARC rebels signed an historic ceasefire agreement to end a 50-year armed conflict. Can you imagine for a moment living in a war zone for more than 50 years? Well, there are some small villages in Colombia where people have suffered this war for their entire lives. This agreement not only gets us closer to be a peaceful society, but it will certainly change the economy, the infrastructure, investment plans, and even the technology we use in Colombia. According to some recent news, US government might provide about 450 million US dollars as financial aid for Colombia in 2017 to help us move through a post-conflict scenario. 
Until last year, we heavily rely on oil and gas revenues. However, nowadays the government of Colombia has set specific goals and budget to improve our performing in other sectors like industry, infrastructure, and technology-driven services. As you might think, it becomes really important to understand and integrate all these changes in our business strategy. That's why we have been looking at some spatial and non-spatial analytics techniques in order to achieve a better understanding of this rapidly changing context. Here I'm going to tell you a brief description of uh, an automatization process that we are doing to analyze spatial and temporal variations of the planet government contracting expenditure. I have to say this approach is the result of a collaboration approach between some managers and the GIS team in Colombia. According to the law 1712 of 2014, better known as the Transparency Law, all the government agencies, including regional authorities at every level, have to publish on a specified website at the beginning of the year a complete description of their planned contracting expenditure for the months to come. These data, however, is being released as unstructured spreadsheets. So we begin by designing a Python scripting tool, which takes hundreds of spreadsheets and automatically filters and organizes them into a data model implemented in a ArcGIS geodatabase. At first glance, we visually confirm that while there are sectors like oil and gas which are very spatially concentrated, there are also some others which are present over wide regions in Colombia, like transportation networks. Let's examine some other aspects playing a role here. On the left, you will see a map published by the British government. This gives us an idea of where the security locations are located. On the right, you find the contracting transparency index map published by a non-government office in Colombia. Summarized in both maps, the green areas are also the more peaceful and the more transparent in terms of government contracting. With all these pieces of information, we perform some spatial processing that give us significant advantage in order to identify trends and patterns in the government strategy contracting over time and territory. Then it was easier for us to correlate regional, social, and economic circumstances and issues with the present national planet contracting expenditure. This key information leads us to focus on a specific sectors, on demand products and services, geographic areas and clients, as well as reinforce some of our trained groups in order to focus on very recent services in which there are just few competitors. All those interesting findings also lead us to explore what opportunities do we have to take advantage to newer technologies. There are some villages which have never been officially mapped before or just have been mapped by very high attitude aerial service. Now we are implementing mobile devices to collect accurate data in the field. We're also working on some opportunities to use drones 
to get precise maps of our natural environment and built infrastructure. We have learned a lot about this technology on the ESRI training website and in some recent ESRI webinars. And at this point, I have to say we are very grateful to the very talented ESRI Columbia team. Together, we have been working on the initial stages of the implementation of some very interesting tools to leverage our expertise and bring us to the next generation of geospatial technologies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Quick Thanks. question for you. I notice um, your reference to drones. Maybe can, th th this is something we talked about a little bit in yesterday's session as well in the insurance area. Can you share a little bit about how you see drones fitting into your business as it evolves? Well, when it comes to drones, we have been working very hard on two main aspects. The first one is uh, related to some legal constraints that uh, the government of Colombia have released over the last months. Okay. And the second one is about uh, specific technology that uh, can be used to achieve a better approach to uh, some specific engineering projects uh, by using like uh, thermal cameras, mm -hmm. uh, conventional cameras, LiDAR sensors, sure. and that sort of things. Um, so we really uh, see a very great opportunity here to uh, not only use those kind of uh, devices and sensors, mm -hmm. but also uh, integrating them with uh, uh, some ESRI software that has been, uh, uh, that has been uh, looking as one of the most useful tools to integrate all this processing mm -hmm. in a very well-defined workflow. Excellent. That's excellent. Thanks, Mike. I look forward to that. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.